Hello, so I just finished the live workout for this week and now I'm just doing some research on regenerative agriculture. I'm probably gonna be chatting with my sister tomorrow and I just wanna make sure that I'm prepared for the conversation and kind of like know what questions to ask in our conversation about how climate change affects human health and what are like some of the best things that we can do to help our environment and help our climate. So yeah, just continuing to do some research today. I'm also making a new recipe tonight in the slow cooker, which is interesting. It's a buffalo chicken recipe, so I'm sure Hopefully that will be good. Jared's out all day, so it's kind of like uh, getting some things done. I um, am working on a new program for Lightning Fitness program. Haven't announced that yet, uh, but you will know more about it soon. Uh, it's very exciting. Excited to share it with you. Okay, so like I said, I am making a buffalo chicken inside of a sweet potato dish thing tonight. It smells amazing, but I'm also in the process of figuring out how to make bran muffins very good for your digestion and they taste amazing without having so much sugar. So I'm gonna like do some experimenting. It could be an epic fail. I'm trying to use liquid stevia as a replacement for the sugar, but it's probably gonna change the texture. So I mean, it's all it's all very loose. I don't know exactly what we're gonna do. I do think I need to get flour, so I can't make them tonight, unfortunately. But that's on the docket as well. Let me show you the buffalo chicken because mm, yum, it's so, it looks so good. Jared working on some planting. <laughs> This was supposed to be a surprise from Jared, but he found out. So yum, it smells so good. And then we just have some sweet potatoes that just had a little bit of um, coconut oil put on them and some salt. And they're going in for 45 minutes at 375. Delish. Okay, so I'm gonna continue doing some work on this food. And I'm excited to chat with Sarah tomorrow, my sister, about climate change and how it affects our bodies, what we can do. Anything you wanna say? No, I'm excited to listen. Okay. Okay, so that ended up being the most delicious, easiest meal I've ever made, where literally all I had to do was put two pounds of chicken in the slow cooker with the bottle of Primal Kitchen buffalo sauce, and you left it there for four hours. You just like used a fork to shred the chicken, and then you put two sweet potatoes in the oven at 400 for 45 to 60 minutes. And it was, oh my God, it was so good. So I will put the ingredients and the specific instructions for that in the description of this video. And then to top it off, Jared and I were just watching Our Planet on Netflix uh, to really get me in the mood for my talk tomorrow with Sarah uh, about saving our planet. So I am heading to bed an early night, but uh, working on some big projects tomorrow that I'm sure that I will be telling you about soon. Good night. Okay, so I'm just getting ready to chat with my sister. It's very low stakes because, you know, he's my sister. And uh, I think we're gonna have a brilliant conversation. I'm really, really excited. She is so smart and so passionate about conservation biology. And so I think this is gonna be really great to learn more about the environment, how we can help the environment and how the environment affects our bodies. So yeah. Should be a good time. Okay, so let's invite Sarah to the chat. There's like snot on me. What is that? Gross. <laughs> Do you like my little cat cup? It's not really mine, it's Jared's, but I use it. Cause I think it's funny. Who knows where you're actually supposed to sit from? The ear? No, no, maybe back here. Oh, thank you so much for doing this. I am so excited to talk about the environment. Yay. Um, so uh, for everyone who doesn't know, this is my sister, Sarah. I have three older sisters and Sarah lives in Hawaii. Uh, Sarah, can you tell us a little bit more about what you do in Hawaii and how you yeah. got there, I guess? <laughs> how I got here. Um, well, we came on vacation to Hawaii when Sam and I were in, well, I guess he was in elementary school and I was in middle school. Yeah and I just fell in love with the ocean. Us being from Wisconsin, we didn't really have much of that. So I went back to Wisconsin and pretty much all I thought about was the ocean. So I was really self-taught. My dad would buy me these textbooks, these marine biology textbooks, and I just page through them. So eventually I got myself out here for school and I, I received a master's in marine science, which is a fancy way of saying a little bit of both marine biology, so biology of the ocean, but also oceanography, so looking at in the environment, ocean currents, and 
more numbers. Yeah, so I've been working out here now for nine years. And my current research looks at anthropogenic impacts. So human impacts, our visitors, tourists that are coming, also the people that live in Hawaii, their impact on coral reefs. And that is extremely important to look at local effects of humans. But other things that we look at that are way bigger are the changes from the changes that we're going to see from climate change. And one of those is increased temperatures. So we do a lot of experiments on how coral reefs are going to either adapt or crash in the midst of climate change. And we're having more frequent and more severe what are called bleaching events, where it's a very warm, warm summer and our corals actually will lose their defenses and a lot of them can die. And because I do that for work, I also am very interested in how I can prevent climate change from happening. And I, I think about that a lot in my everyday life. I think that I've been woefully ignorant about best practices when it comes to taking actionable steps to help our environment. And I think that like, I'm fine with like some general things. Like obviously I know about recycling, although it really took me moving to New York City to learn anything about like actual recycling practices. But I feel like it's time to like really take a step forward. I'm, well, I'm late to the game. But um, take a step forward because not only do we really have to be thinking about our environment, but we also have to be thinking about how these environmental uh, changes that we're making are absolutely affecting our health in a really negative way. So that's kind of why I wanted to chat with you and I wanted to kind of hear what you have to say about that. Yeah, I mean, I'm by no means an expert on this subject. It's more of a hobby for me, but really I feel like it should be a hobby for everyone because it does impact our health so much. Yeah. Um, I wait, guess... wait, before, before you go any further though, I will say you may, this may be a hobby for you, but you're more informed than most people because of what you do for a living. Right. So part of my work is looking at how climate change and other anthropogenic impacts do impact our environment. Right. Mostly coral reefs. Um, I would love to get more into helping with land-based as well. And hopefully in the future I will. Yeah. But right now I'm just doing things on the home side to lessen my impact. Yeah. Totally. So what are some of those things that you've been doing? Well, I think that one of the most impactful things that you can do for small scale reducing your carbon footprint is thinking about your food. So one thing that I think is really interesting is sometimes you talk about macros and you just did that that vlog about how much protein you should take in. And not only is that great to know for your body, but it's also really good to know how much protein you should be taking in so you aren't taking in more than you actually need. Right. And not only how much protein, but where is your protein coming from? So, you know, like if you can reduce the amount of meat you're eating in your everyday life, you should. Yeah. Um, but make sure that your protein requirements are healthy enough for your body. You can lessen your carbon footprint by making sure that your animals that you're eating are regeneratively raised on pasture. One of the things that I think is really interesting and more frequently is being is in the literature is our biodiversity loss. So that means that as climate change is impacting our environment, we're actually losing species diversity. So that's the number of species that we run across. Um, this could be animals, plants, fungi. And some studies have found supporting evidence that the higher biodiversity that we have in our environment, the healthier we are. Right. And that's not only just mental health, that's, you know, like bacterial gut health. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's super interesting, just looking at biodiversity and knowing that with climate change increasing and making our our food everything our environment more stochastic we're going to lose that diversity and then our our environment becomes less stable and we may not be able to preserve that for the future uh there are so many good points that you brought up 
And it seems like it all stems, oh my gosh, there are a lot of sirens today. <laughs> um, it all stems from the type of farming that we're doing because, you know, with the way that our current system is set up, we have lost so much of that biodiversity. Of course, our gut wants as many different sources of fiber to be able to like populate all that great bacteria. And we're, we don't have that anymore because we grow the things that are cheapest to grow and we grow the things that we can feed our livestock, which is just, you know, so backward, especially when we look at how that feed is inflaming the livestock. And then we're eating that meat, which causes inflammation in our body, you know, like it, it, it's so hard to have a conversation about how we should eat meat when we know that most of the meat that is in circulation probably is causing inflammation in our body when we eat it. Well, I think you bring up a great point there and it's really about voting with your dollar. Yeah. So it's not only just, you know, like our meat. Yes, if you're supporting regenerative agriculture or something that is a carbon neutral or sink, then you're supporting this and you're making it grow further and farther away from this factory farming with feeding the cows food that's going to make them inflamed and in turn give us inflammation. Right. So where you're putting your dollar, yes, it may be more expensive, but you're helping to set everyone up for the future and being sustainable in that. It's hard because I mean, like. Like it, you have to make it a priority, right? It's like some people don't have the privilege to be able to purchase meat that is at that cost. Most and I, definitely. And I, so I think that's like a really valid point. I think that the one thing that I try and really keep in mind is that like, I'm not getting like swindled when I buy a grass fed and finished piece of beef, you know, like it is, it just is so much more expensive to, do regenerative agriculture right now because uh, because of subsidies exactly because so, the government has not set up right one of the really neat things that is actually happening here in Hawaii right now the woman who runs forage where I get my beef and other meats she also sells invasive meats so deer are really invasive here so that's really a good thing to be eating these invasive meats because it's yeah. kind of killing two birds with one stone. Sure. But a really neat thing that she's been doing lately is, or that she started up maybe a year ago, is that she was able to use food stamps to get meat from her at the farmer's market. So I think we just need these people who have a vision and really will go for it and make this type of meat or this type of food available because right now what's really upsetting is that it is cheaper to get a hamburger from mcdonald's than it is to get even a salad yeah yeah absolutely can you talk a little bit about this month we're doing uh no single-use plastic and i swear i'm probably going to get like three days out of this entire month that i actually don't purchase single-use plastic it's so hard like i'm thinking about going to the grocery store today and I'm gonna have to tell them, which like this isn't a big deal, but I'm gonna have to tell them when I get my meat from the meat counter that I don't want them to wrap it in plastic. You know, like they just do that. You don't ask for it. They just like, they do it, you know? Yeah. And there are so many examples of that happening. We're not gonna be able to eat out because every eat out container has plastic in it. Can you talk a little bit more about plastic? What it does to our environment, also what it does to our bodies. Yeah, so I think that's a great question and this challenge is super exciting um, because this is something everyone can work on. And I know in Hawaii, I think that we have made strides to become more plastic free, but we're nowhere near perfect. And something you do have to um, think about when you're doing a plastic challenge or any type of sustainability challenge is that you don't want it to overtake your life so right. yes we are in a climate crisis but every little thing you can do really does help and eventually it becomes easy so you don't want this to overtake your brain yeah with that in mind um you can do things like bring your own containers places it's kind of a pain in the butt but you can even save plastic containers from whatever takeout 
you've had and reuse those. Yeah. Um, just like Ziplocs, they also make really good reusable Ziplocs. And then with your purchasing at the grocery store of vegetables, that kind of thing, they have really good mesh baggies for that kind of thing that you can use for years. So there are a lot of really great alternate sources that can be reusable, even if they are plastic. And you usually like bring a Tupperware if you go out to eat, right? Because then you'll put your leftovers in that Tupperware rather than having them like box it up for you. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot easier because then you bring it home and it's already in your Tupperware. And yeah. they, you may get some funny looks, but who cares? <laughs> I also think um, switching to glass Tupperware has been kind of a big game changer. It's definitely an investment, but in terms of like making sure that you can put it in the dishwasher and it's not like, you know, those in the microwave. or in the yeah. microwave, right? Exactly. That like that plastic isn't just like melting away into your food all the time. Right. I think that we've moved, we've moved far on our plastic where hopefully we're not getting as many chemicals as once, you know, like BPA, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but regardless, if you can avoid it, you should. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like the only plastic that I really use is for like, um, for eating is like my blender bottle. And I want to do a little bit more research into like if me putting my blender bottle in the dishwasher like is just like kind of like wearing away because I know it's BPA free but like I don't really know what that means right now I, I'm, I'm assuming that you know BPA is bad for us but like <laughs> but I don't know if I should still be worried you know yeah I'm not sure about your specific blender bottle I'm hoping that the food and drug administration are regulating that kind of thing but yeah. It's the same with our supplements, you know, some some things are not as regulated as they should be, but that's not something I'm super familiar with. I want to go back because one thing that you said I, is so applicable and so universal in that, like, we don't need to use this challenge to go to zero to 60 and completely change our lives, because when does that ever work? You know, like when does that ever create sustainable change, like lasting change? And so I love the idea of me trying to not purchase plastic this month, but like knowing that I'm probably gonna fail most of those days, you know, like I'm gonna work on it. I'm gonna try and take like some incremental steps. I but mean, so fun. you know, like instead of saying, oh, I failed today, I used that. I used Saran Wrap. Yeah. Think about like every time you don't use Saran Wrap and you say, oh, that was a win. Yeah. Don't think about the sales, just think about when you do make a progressive change. Totally. That's a win. And you use beeswax paper, yeah? Oh yeah, I'll go get it. I'll okay. Yeah. It's my favorite thing. So there's a woman out here at the farmer's market who makes this beeswax saran wrap paper and it's just really nice. You can put it over anything and you just kind of heat it with your hand and then it stays on. You can store anything and if you want to put a sandwich in it, you could. And just like close it off. So it's super easy, lasts forever. Do you like wash them or what do you do? So what you do is you run it under warm water and I use my sponge. Yeah. Yeah, so you wash them, but not usually hot water. Sure. But yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite hats. Oh, the other thing, even though this isn't necessarily environment related, I do want you to talk about your smoothies because, you know, I'm a big, obviously, you know, I'm a big smoothie person and I think that you have really mastered the smoothie game. Okay, well, I hate using a blender. Mm -hmm. I hate it, it's super loud. I also, hate cleaning my blender. So, because I hate my blender so much, Daddy, come on, we're in the middle of something. <laughs> because I hate using my blender, I'll do it one day of the week or however many times I need to, but I make mass quantities of smoothie at one time. So I usually make like two to three blenders full of my green smoothie and I'll put it into my glass mason jars and then I store it all in the freezer. So let me take you over. Here are all my, my smoothies that I have. And yeah, 
So every day when I drink a smoothie, I put another one in the fridge for tomorrow. And for Sam's instruction, I will add a scoop of protein powder with it right before I eat it and stir it all up. I haven't tried yet to add the protein powder to my smoothie mix and freeze it that way. But it just makes it super easy and you know, like I can grab one for lunch and not think about it. If I'm working through lunch, it's really nice, but I'm not going to stop what I'm working on to go and make a smoothie and then have to clean it up. Right. So because I'm very lazy, this really works out for me and I can get my veggies and, and my fruits in. So I think that you have the right idea. I don't think that you should add the protein because the protein really makes the smoothie like really get so much bigger and then you wouldn't be able to make as much. So might as well just add this protein afterward when you're doing it daily and yeah. Yeah, I mean, for some people it might not be palatable because it doesn't break up as much as if you like actually stuck it in the blender. Right. Um, I'm kind of, I like, my, I'm pretty weird and I like my smoothies a little on the thicker side. Right. I usually eat them with a spoon instead of a straw. Yeah. So it really doesn't bother me. Um, that's a good thing too, is because then it feels like it's actually food rather than just like a drink, you know? Yeah, I think so. And yeah, I just, I don't really like drinks that are that big. Yeah. So, but I also, I, I pack a lot of veggies into the smoothie. So it's usually on the thicker side because of all the fiber. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So is there anything else that you wanted to talk about in terms of climate change or environment hacks or you know things that you are doing right now for work or like anything that you think people might find interesting well i know we talked a lot about regenerative agriculture and trying to get your protein sources whether that is meat or vegan or vegetarian protein sources from somewhere that is using regenerative agriculture yeah. but another thing that we can do is just get things local, you know? So reduce your carbon by not having to ship it to you. Yeah. If you can, you want to know your farmer, know your rancher, know your fisher. So, you know, like it's all about what's in season. If you can eat something that's in season in your region, please do. <laughs> Yeah, totally. so always think about where not just your food, but everything you're buying is coming from. If you're going to use it more than one time, all of these things can reduce your carbon footprint. I yeah, think thinking about what you're buying, how long it took to travel to you, where it's grown or how it's made, if it's sourced from sustainable practices and how long you'll use it. I think it's so smart and I think even like probably going to the farmer's market is one of the best things that we can do because you know so much less likely to be using plastic that way so much more likely that the foods that you are getting are at a much higher micro and macronutrient value you know because like they haven't had to be like frozen and then shipped or like shipped for a really long time or you know they're out of season or whatever yeah, yeah. There's so much that, and you can kind of ensure that that you're getting the best that you can get by going to that farmer's market and just making like human connections, which is great. You know, like it's, it's a good thing. And farmers who are really like fighting the good fight need that, you know, so. Oh yeah. I also will say, I, I doubt that it's like an exact transaction, but when we look at how much better those foods are for you. I wonder if like the extra cost is like, you know, like as much. Does that make sense? I don't know how to say this exactly. You're wondering if the health benefits are worth the extra price. Right. Um, and yeah, I don't know if there have been any studies on that, but what I can tell you is that it is investing directly in your community. Yeah. You know, so you're not only getting fresher veggies and fruits, but you're investing in the people in your community that are making that happen. And I think that's really important. Yeah. Um, just like I talked about before, using your dollar to vote, where you're spending your money, whether that's on goods, services, or your food source, which, you know, like this is something we eat at least three meals a day, most yeah. of us. 
yeah. generally. Yeah. So this is a really good place to invest your money into is good food, good people to grow your food, people who are interested in sustainable farming practices that can not only be used now, but in the future and yeah. making our food production more resilient for the future because with our climate changing and going from, you know, too much water to not enough water or too hot to too cold, we're going to have a lot more highs and lows coming in our future. And that really, really scares a lot of us for our, foods, our food security. You right. know, not only are we having biodiversity losses, you know, we're walking through the forest or whatever, but this is our food security. The best way to really go about any kind of diet change or to go about making sure that we're eating healthier is to take a genuine interest in the food that we eat and where it came from. You know, like I think it's so much more exciting to eat really fresh food when you do take that genuine interest. And it's so much easier for us to be eating non-processed foods, you know, and ultimately that's like, that's the big fight, right? It's just trying to get people to not eat processed foods and eat more whole foods. And we can do that by really, uh, I mean, one of the tactics that we can use is just like care care about where you're getting your food, care about what it does to your body and like what the composition of it is and like care about your farming community. Care, like it's like yeah. such an amazing step. And care about sustainability for the future. Yeah, yeah. Because you're going to want your kids to be able to eat real food in the future. Yeah, and even if we don't have kids, you want to be fat. And I want Errol to, to have uh, some land to roam on, you know? Like, thank you for chatting, Sarah. Love you. Thank you. Huh, so much good stuff. Thank you so much for watching that conversation with my sister and me. Um, I think we're gonna call it there for this week's vlog. We know there is so much more to talk about, but I want to split it up a little bit because you know, that was a long time. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week. We have, um, I'm not gonna tell you what because I don't know what it is yet. That's why, so I'll see you next week. <laughs>